one minute after 9 o'clock here at 88.5 FM WVOF in Fairfield, Connecticut. The Upper Room with Joe Kelly. We are really honored because a very talented genius composer, pianist, and uh, he's had such a body of work thus far through his musical career, but he is uh, saving more along these years, and he's performing uh, this Saturday night at the prestigious Tanglewood Jazz Festival in Tanglewood uh, out there, and we're going to talk all about that and, of course, the the CD Conversations with my family. We welcome to the Upper Room in WVF, Mike Garson. How you doing, Mike? Hey, it's nice to be here, Joe. Thank you. So, so you you live in uh, Northern California, right? No, Los Angeles. Oh, okay. Area. Yeah, I was going to ask you about the the wildfires. Any danger to to yourself and your family? Well, let's put it this way: there was a lot of smoke here today, and we couldn't really go out. We're we're still about twenty thirty miles from our house, but the um, the the, the particles from the smoke uh, are all over, so you know you could feel it when you go out. Right, right. Yeah, I got family out in uh, Stevenson's Ranch and. Oh, uh, Roland Heights. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's right near where my daughter lives. Right. So, so we fr- from 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 your accent. Are you from the originally from the East Coast? Brooklyn. <laughs> oh, okay. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> I you, can't get rid of it. I've been out here thirty years, and it's still still New York. No, nah, no. Nah, come on. It's, it's a great accent. So, um, Brooklyn, and growing up uh, over there. What was your first introduction to to music? What was it? Uh, piano. It was piano when I was seven years old. What, what part of Brooklyn? Uh, Flappish. Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I started with the piano pretty young, and I really never turned around once I started, and I'm still doing the same thing. I started working professionally at 14, and it's still going, you know? Right, I've never right. done anything else. I've never, I wouldn't know how to do anything. Now, now what was the, the scene back then when you, you got into your first working gig uh, playing piano? Was it in uh, Greenwich Village? Well, my first jazz gigs were in the village, uh-huh. and uh, and that was in the uh, say uh, early to mid '60s, and then uh, you know it continued from there. But then, out of nowhere, in 1972, after playing a series of jazz gigs in New York, I got a call from David Bowie, and then my whole life changed. And now, what what uh, drew David Bowie, and, and obviously. Loves your playing all these years. Uh, how did he contact you and why? Well, there was a, an avant-garde singer who on, was on the New York jazz scene called Annette Peacock, and I had just played on her album. She happened to know David, and when David came to America to do the first Spiders from Mars tour, first time he'd ever be in the U.S. playing, uh, he asked her if she knew a pianist and uh because they wanted to augment the group with piano and she recommended me uh mick ronson who's a great guitarist who's not with us anymore he auditioned me i think i played 10 seconds on a song of bowie's called changes and he said i had the gig and i said i didn't even start playing he said well i can tell which was a great feeling and and i was hired for eight weeks and somehow i'm still with him that's right in uh now take you know, take us through so many years of, of touring with David, and now I guess, I guess it's when he gets the inspiration to record and, and tour uh, gives you the call and you're, you're at the ready, right? That's how it's been, you know, certainly in the 70s when I did it, and then again when I joined him again in 92, it's been that way since. Uh, right now, you know, he has a daughter growing up, so I think he's enjoying being a father and uh, I've been enjoying out here being a grandfather, and, and uh, generally speaking, when I don't work with him, and he always gets first preference for me, right, right. Uh, when I'm not working with him, I'm either composing classical music or playing jazz concerts, like the one I'll be doing uh, at Tanglewood on Saturday night with uh, Nina Freelon, who's a great jazz singer, and Harolyn Blackwell, who's an opera singer. I'm bringing a string quartet and a jazz sextet, and I'm mixing up the two musics, with Duke Ellington. That's right, and the Tanglewood Jazz Festival is really prestigious. You'll be performing at the uh, Seji Ozawa Hall. I, I think I pronounced the first name right, did Ozawa. I? Ozawa. Oh, okay. Uh, that's in Lenox, Mass., which is not too far here from uh, Fairfield, Connecticut. And uh, you can go to bso.org and uh, find out all about uh, getting tickets for Mike's performance, uh, Dreaming the Duke, 
you'll be uh you, we talked off air a little bit about the inspiration to perform Duke Ellington's music, but you're putting your own Mike Garson spin on it. And tell us about the preparation, especially with the vocalists as well. Well, you know, there was a lot of preparation to it. The original performance of the Duke Ellington music was six months ago at the Kennedy Center in Washington, D.C. Uh, I was actually commissioned to take these works of Duke and mix it up for the opera singer and the jazz singer. So it gave me an opportunity to use both musics that I love classical and jazz, and combine them. So I would take some of these Duke Ellington themes and I would write my own introductions, which, you know, unless you really knew uh, Duke's music very well, it, they sounded very obscured, and I put them in a classical feeling with the string quartet and what have you, and then all of a sudden we're playing a big band <laughs> or jazz version, jazz sextet version of uh, Don't Get Around Much Anymore or A-Train or, you know... Uh, pray you to a kiss or see jam blues and then all of a sudden it goes to the left field and I'm doing these crazy avant-garde classical things on caravan where I'm having strings play normally the jazz parts and I'm having the jazz trumpet and trombone and sax they're playing the classical parts so I did a lot of interesting things I worked on the arrangements for about six months and then we performed it at the Kennedy Center and now uh, this is the first time in six months where this will be the first performance we're doing it again, and then we're doing it again uh, January and February in Minneapolis and Milwaukee and Florida. Oh, where are you playing up in Minneapolis? Do you, I do you know the venue? Or? Uh, probably at the university there. I actually okay. forgot the itinerary, but I've never played at Tanglewood, and I'm a little embarrassed, but I, I've always wanted to play there, and when I grew up, Leonard Bernstein was one of my heroes, and that was one of the places he always conducted. And uh, Asawa, who is a, a Japanese conductor, studied with um, Leonard Bernstein, so that's what they named the hall after, and uh, and now that's where I'm playing. So yeah. this, it's kind of inspiring. The music will probably be popping out of the uh, walls, and, and <laughs> being that it's jazz music, even though I've arranged 60 or 70% of it, there's a lot of room for improvisation for myself and the horn players and for Nina to scat and that kind of a thing. Yeah, I'm sure it's going to be a great night, and uh, it's 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 a nice festival that that it's right at the tail end of the summer, and uh, people, of course, the music is still great. Go out for uh, Labor Day weekend, and you can go to bso.org to order your tickets, and you can also go to our special guest website, mikegarson.com, and uh, you can pick up conversations with my family on Res Resonance Records, and also. Uh, there's a DVD included on uh, one of the versions of it, right? Well, in in the package with the CD, it's a CD and a DVD. So the CD has all original music that I've written for family members over many years. And then the DVD is me playing a live jazz trio concert with Peter Erskine, who's a wonderful drummer. And uh, so that, that sort of getting two for the price of one kind of a thing. It's, it's a very nice, very nice proje project and was a nice album, you know. Uh, you have to tell us a uh, little lead into uh, the child within. We're going to play it right now from Mike Garson. Tell tell us about recording this one. Well, you know, uh, having two daughters and having five grandkids, and knowing that we all have this child within us. Uh, this piece just came out, but on a technical side, the interesting aspect of it it's based on the harmonies of an old jazz standard called Stella by Starlight. But uh, I don't use that melody, but I'm using those harmonies. And then there's a lot of interesting improvisation and orchestral stuff on it and piano playing and a nice guitar solo. Uh, so it's, it's, it was quite a project, and I worked on it about a year and a half ago, and then it came out about a year ago. So uh, I was very pleased because it had four and a half stars in Downbeat uh, Jazz Magazine. And, uh, you know, it was songs that I've been writing for my family my whole life. Now, the DVD is just improvising with just a great trio, just off the cuff playing on standards. That was, that was fun, too. You know? So uh, we'll listen to this right now. Conversations with my family from the very talented, and he'll be in town, Mike Garson, at the Tanglewood Jazz Festival Saturday night, Dreaming with the Duke, and this is The Child Within right here on WVOF. That's a wonderful song from our special guests. We're having uh, a great... Chat off air, Mike Garson with us, and that is the child within from 
conversations with my family, and we were talking to you know, he's awful busy playing his own music. He'll be at the Tanglewood Jazz Festival in Lenox, Massachusetts. Beautiful venues. And uh, that is uh, part of the weekend, which begins on the 4th on Friday. And then a uh, great double bill that night. And uh, Regina Carter, her quartet, performing uh, Reverse Thread and going right into uh, Dreaming the Duke. You'll be there as well. Yeah. Who's going on first? Regina goes on first. Okay. And then, uh, well, I have, I think, 12 musicians coming out with me. So wow. it will be very, yeah. very cool. String quartet, jazz sextet. And we have uh, Nina Freelon on uh, jazz vocals and Harrowin Blackwell singing the opera stuff. Okay, now let me ask you, because we, we get musicians listening to the show. When, when you're going to the gig uh, Saturday night, what, what's required for your own... Uh, musical setup for your for yourself on stage that night well first i go to new york and rehearse the band on thursday and friday because everyone's from the east coast except me okay and then uh we rehearse the music then we have a sound check on saturday at tanglewood so it's really up to the sound engineers to get the monitors right the microphones right you know the balance right the reverb right and we test the songs to make sure everybody hears each other. So you have two elements. You have to have your stage sound right, which is the monitor system, and then you need the speakers in the house putting out the right representation of the jazz music. It's a little different than a rock concert in that uh, you, it's, you, you're not using quite as much bass and drums and that kind of a thing. It's more of a acoustic vibe where you're just embellishing the sound through the house system. So it's, it's, it's a subtle thing, and that's why you have a sound check. The sound check's about an hour and a half, and we run a few of those things and make sure every instrument can be heard by everyone on stage. So that's what the sound check's about. Now, how about for your piano? Piano, you know, you have a couple of mics in it, and then right next to the okay. piano I have these two speakers, which are my monitors, and I have to make sure I hear myself both from the piano and from the monitors, and then I could hear the bass player and the drummer, very, very important, and then I could hear the string quartet, and they're not being drowned out by the trumpet and trombone and saxophone. Do you, do you have a specific piano uh, you always have to have on uh, on stage? Do you endorse anybody? I've been with Yamaha for 26, 28 years, so okay. uh, they usually bring pianos for me, but sometimes if it's an inconvenient location that... I, I play whatever is in the hall. They usually a Steinway or a Baldwin or a Yamaha, so it's always a very good piano, especially at Tanglewood. I wouldn't even worry. Uh, Mike Garson is with us. His website mikegarson.com. You also can go to myspace.com backslash Mike Garson G A R S O N. He'll be performing a wonderful concert up at Tanglewood Jazz Festival, which is uh, this Labor Day weekend. You can go to B S O. Dot .org we want to thank Dawn Singh and uh one thing that you've been uh, doing over the past few years is uh writing a lot of music recording a lot of music and making it available through your website uh for free how, how about, how about I, I gave away about 100 downloads over the last couple of years and uh I was doing experimental music writing some electronic stuff doing some solo piano stuff a couple of jazz things and I would just put it up there and it would be an amazing phenomenon because within an hour, half hour, I would get communication from Russia, from Japan, from Australia. And it's like instant feedback. And to me, that was worth uh, not charging for to get that feedback. That was my exchange. Mm -hmm. I couldn't do it forever because as musicians, we have to make a living. But just as a survey for that period of a year or two when I started to get familiar with MySpace and, and started to really um, understand that we're in a new era, it's a very nice thing to share uh, music from that viewpoint. So I, I was doing that, and uh, cause normally I'd make a record with a record company, and uh, the record wouldn't show up for six months from when you finished recording it, and by that time I'm into something else. Here I write something, put it up, and then people are responding within an hour. So it was an amazing uh, sensation and phenomena for me to experience that. Uh, I'm looking at your website with the picture of you, the black and white photo playing the piano, and right on, on uh, right above you, uh, where you used to see papers uh, of the charts and everything. What what, are, what is that exactly? It looks like a electronic book. I, I don't know if you recall the picture. It's on with the conversations with my family. 
Well, there's the front page. Um, I use this thing called the Music Pad. Oh, and okay. I'm able to. It's like a computer screen, and I'm able to put scan all my music into the pad. And then there's a pedal that turns the pages for me. So if I'm playing an outdoor concert, the music doesn't blow. Oh, okay. Hey, and it's all in this one pad, so that's I could great. put hundreds of pieces of music in there. So I, I, I use that. I'll use that in Tanglewood, in fact. Uh, Mike Garson will be performing at Tanglewood that Saturday night, and uh, you go right there, dreaming the Duke. Mike Garson is amazing uh, compositions, uh, just doing his own take uh, on. Duke Ellington Classics, and uh, he'll be performing on a double bill with Regina Carter, very talented uh, violinist who uh, has performed here at Fairfield University. And you can go for all the information. You know, it's just a, a great weekend of music. Uh, BSO.org, Boston Symphony Orchestra. And right now we're going to play another track from Conversations with My Family, Blues for the Terrible Twos. Yeah, what was that like? Uh, I, I don't have kids. My, we, my wife and I just have a dog, but you always hear about the terrible twos. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, how old... I, t- I took the easy way out. <laughs> did, did, did the dog get into the terrible twos? <laughs> I, I, I think we adopted her around two years old, so maybe we uh, escaped the... Well, the then that one. dog would be much older because it's, if you compare it to human age, it's way older. Yeah, yeah, you're right. <laughs> but, uh, you know... Kids sometimes start to feel their oats and stretch their wings when they get around two or three, uh-huh, and right. they can get a little wild, and I would see this running around the house, you know, so I had to write a little, uh, basically a, a, a little blues, but it's kind of like an up kind of upbeat kind of blues, and it's, uh, well, you'll hear it when you play it. Uh, this is Mike Garson from Conversation with My Family. Go to MikeGarson.com. Great track right there from... Conversations with my family, the music of Mr. Mike Garson, our special guest, and we're honored to have him on. And he'll be performing, flying in from uh, Los Angeles, California, into New York, and then up to Boston. Uh, not, not to Boston, but Lenox, Massachusetts, uh, Massachusetts for the Tanglewood Jazz Festival. And uh, what are rehearsals like? I mean, you've you've worked with rock bands all these years, David Bowie, and leading your own own ensemble and Tell, tell us what it's going to be like getting everybody in shape for, for this concert. These kind of things are pretty interesting because I'll have a few hours with the string quartet, a few hours with the jazz sextet, and then a few hours with the singers, and then I'll put it all together and we'll run the show a few times. It's, it's, some of the music is quite difficult. Some of it just is improvisation and it flows and it's very easy, but there, there are spots, I'd say 10% of the show, you know, you really have to be a good reader. So, because um, I've written some complicated classical passages, mm-hmm. but in the more jazz sections, it's it's uh, you know, you just have to be a very well accomplished jazz uh, musician. You know, and uh, so so this may be a stupid question, but is it required to 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 read music in in the high the the level of jazz you guys play? I mean, top of the line, or can anybody improv just without being able to read? There's a few guys who've pulled it off through the years. George Benson doesn't read much, and uh-huh. Errol Garner didn't read much. But if you're going to play in a, a band and read charts, like someone might, like myself wrote out, right. you have to have someone to read them, because it would be impossible to figure it out by ear. Okay, gotcha on that. Yeah, so I won't be taking anybody's job away <laughs> anytime, <laughs> <laughs> that's for sure. Um, you know, you, you talked about... Uh, stuff that you released online and and you know you you found people to collaborate with all over the world why, why don't you talk a little bit about that it's just a wonderful thing i i am able to receive mp3s from bands all around the world and i'm able to add my piano part to their tracks and then if they like what they hear i send them this the high quality uh wave file of just the uh, solo piano part and then their engineer puts it in their track at their own studio so I don't have to leave my house where my studio is located and and I'm able to uh, charge them less money than if I went there no less they have to fly me and put me in a hotel so it's very cost effective of course some of the bigger acts still prefer that I come to their studio and all that and I still love doing that and I do a certain amount of that but for smaller projects uh, 
It's working very, very well. Uh, Mike Garson joins us, and uh, you ought to check out his website because he's got some great pictures throughout the years going back to... I didn't even know you were in the service back in the day, right? Yeah, during the Vietnam period, I, I was very lucky because I was in the Army band, but I was definitely in the service. You know? Right. So so did that, go, going away to the service, did that put your music uh, on hold, or did you... It actually helped my music because uh, I was able to practice between four and eight hours a day because that was my job in the army to play in the army band uh-huh so you you would get promoted to higher levels of sergeant and all that based on how you played so i actually took care of business and probably did more practicing in the army than any other time in my life uh you'll be performing it's that uh tickets you can go right now to bso.org and uh, also on the bill uh, Paquito de Rivera and uh, Bucky Pizzarelli, Kurt Elling, and you'll be uh, performing that night on a double bill, Regina Carter and her quartet, uh, Reverse Thread, and uh, Dream in the Duke. You've got uh, how many people are going to be joining you on stage? I have about 12. 12, Two fingers, okay. a string quartet, and a jazz sex test. Right, so you got uh, two vocalists, right? Two vocalists, opera and jazz. Right, and then uh, on Sunday, Kenny Barron and Mulgrew Miller. That's great. Uh, yeah. So and and also uh, John Faddis, Wallace yes. Roney. Oh yeah, I've seen Wallace Roney up at Berkeley. So uh, wow, this this is uh, the cream of the crop of musicians. Mike Garson amongst uh, all those great people. And I, I got to ask you, your most elaborate keyboard setup. Which tour has it been? Um, I had a pretty elaborate setup when I toured with the Smashing Pumpkins. Uh huh. Had an elaborate setup when I on some of the Bowie tours, you know, I had three, four keyboards plus a piano. So, um, and then I played some fusion music in the late 70s with Stanley Clark, and I had a, a pretty elaborate setup then, too. Now, now, you guys, you've been with Bowie for 33 years? Uh, a little more. Were, were you uh, always uh, intrigued by his different characters and fashion statements and, uh, you know, the way his music was going? Or could yeah, you... I mean, I was... Let's, let's face it, he's an innovative, innovative uh, genius and a legend. So as another artist, even though I came from a different music, I could respect immediately his, his talent. So, right, right. And it was, it's nice to, you know, have work with people who do things you don't do because this way it keeps it fresh and you don't get bored, you know? Yeah, yeah, it's like a great surprise every, every, every right. album, right? That's right. Um, and, and the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame Awards, you guys played that, right? Yeah, we've we've played a lot of uh, concerts uh, throughout the world for for many many years, you know, and it's fascinating because the things that appear on YouTube from time to time that I'm finding right. are things I did in the '70s with them to things that I did a few years ago, because people are always videoing and or recording it, and it's amazing to watch some of these things because I move on and I'm into the next thing, but then you will see what somebody puts up and 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 you actually listen and you get it. You get a big kick out of that. Right. I love YouTube. Um, MikeGarson.com, G-A-R-S-O-N.com, and uh, we encourage our listeners to go out and support live music. Uh, you'll be flying it in those frequent flyer miles all weekend long. And uh, How about some upcoming plans the rest of the fall and winter uh, for yourself? Yeah, I have some more concerts with this Duke Ellington in different parts of the country in January and February, we're playing in Milwaukee and Minneapolis and a few other places in Florida. And then I'm doing some teaching that's going to end up online where I'm teaching keyboard, but very basic, like to a new keyboard player. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to be doing some of that. That'll show up online in a couple of months. I'm doing a DVD where I'm also teaching, you know, some of the tricks I have regarding playing the piano and keyboards. So I'm going to be doing a bit of that. And uh, concerts sort of always sort of just come in, you know. Uh, the phone rings and all of a sudden I have another concert, and that's sort of how it works. I have a few jazz concerts out here uh, at some of the universities at Claremont, which is out here. And uh, I'll take my trio out. And uh, How far are you from uh, Cal State Fullerton? Is that close? 
I'm about 50 miles. Oh, okay. I, and got I have you. taught there and played there also. Yeah, my brothers go to school there now. Oh, so, yeah. yeah. I, I did yeah. some shows there back in the 80s and 90s. Oh, okay. So so go to MikeGarson.com to keep up to date on what's happening. And, uh, he's in demand as well, so whether touring with uh, David Bowie or Smashing Pumpkins, no doubt. You, you did some recording with... Uh, with no doubt yeah. with uh, Gwen Stefani on one of their albums called Return to Saturn. Mm -hmm. I'm on a bonus track that actually occurs five minutes after the album ends. Oh, okay. So how, how did they, they dial you up and say they want Mike Garson, the special touch? You know, I was touring with David Bowie in, in South America in the late 90s, and they were our opening act. Oh, I got you. Okay. So we got to meet and hang out, and the next thing I knew, she asked me to play on this track. Oh, what was the tour? I think, did you tour and the Blue Man Group was on the tour? Uh-huh. Yeah, my buddy plays in uh, the Blue Man Group, so I remember oh. he told me you, you guys, it was a huge tour, right? Yep. Yeah, I remember that, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, he did that. They were fun. Yeah, he, he's out, He's out. He, well, he's been out there three or four years out in Germany with the Blue Man Group, oh. but uh, yeah, I remember oh. they did that big tour. He was really excited about that. Wow. But uh, we're well, gonna, what, what does he play? Oh, he, he's a drummer. He's... He's originally from New York, but he played, uh, he moved to Minneapolis and played with, you know, the Prince guys. And uh, then he played with uh, this kind of young girl, Shannon Kerfman. She she was like a, a like a country rock. I see. I think she would, Clive Davis had signed her oh, nice. for the record. But but he's with, he got into Blue Man Group. and You know, he, those percussionists in that group, they're great. I always love and respect what they do, you know? Yeah, he told me he... He played when he was in the New York, when they played in like lower, you know, below the village. He did like uh, 13 shows a week. It was pretty demanding. So I remember when they were there. Yeah, right. Little little theater there. That's right. Yeah. So we got to thank you, Mike. And we'd love to have you come on the show again and, and love to see you here in Connecticut. We've got we to talk to the people over at the Quick Center to bring you over there for, for their program. Great. I'd love to do that. Um, go to Mike's website, MikeGarzen.com, Conversations with My Family. If and anyone wants to write me directly, because I do private teaching and I do consultations. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. They could actually... What's the best info the, for you? I email AvantGarson at AOL.com. That's A-V-A-N-T, Garson, G-A-R-S-O-N, AvantGarson.com. And, and you're available for uh, for all your expertise and, and mentorship. and I do a lot of that with a lot of uh, musicians around the world. I've been doing it for years, but somehow when you, feel, when you get a little older, people are more interested or they you finally have proven yourself because you've right. been there so long, you know. <laughs> well, ha have a great time, and hopefully we'll be making it up there Saturday night. Oh, that'd be nice. And uh, that is in Tanglewood uh, Jazz Festival. That is at Lenox, Massachusetts. It, it's an indoor for you, right? It's indoors, but believe it or not, the hall can open up, and then it leads out to this beautiful lawn where you can buy tickets also and sit and listen to it from out there. Yeah, that's 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 gonna be nice. So, uh, dreaming the Duke, dreaming the Duke, Mike Garson, and uh, carrying on Duke Ellington's legacy in his own style. So it should be really exciting and. Uh, opening up Regina Carter's quartet, Reverse yeah. Thread, and, and always special surprises. So. I'll get there and stay there, and uh, want to thank you, Mike, for for coming on the show. My pleasure. And, and thanks to Dawn Singh. And uh, yeah, Dawn's great. Dawn's great, of course. And we'll play a lullaby for our daughters right now. Another track from Conversations with My Family. And uh, thank you so much, Mike. Pleasure. Bye. -bye.